welcome to our episode of SRB TV. I'm Chris. And I'm Christopher. And on today's episode, we are taking a look at a series of unfortunate events, season three, episode. What are you doing with my jacket? We're, on today's episode, we are taking a look at a series of unfortunate events, season three, episode four, The Grim Grotto, part two. So previously, we ran into. They, ran, they met a submarine. Yeah, they ran into a submarine they, pretty much. I, I put they met a submarine because they legit more or less met a submarine. Yeah. And it turns out it had the daughter of a high-ranking of a uh, submarine captain in there, though the captain is elsewhere apparently. Um, uh, we found out there there she's in search of what you know the VF the core VFD fire starters are after the sugar sugar bowl. bowl. Yes, because she may have found a way to get to the sugar bowl. Mm -hmm. On top of that, Phil's alive! Well, he was kind of alive by the end of the Sorry, day. Phil's back! Phil's back, that's what it is. Phil's back. First character, first returning character of, of, season. Season. of, oh. this, of this third season. Yes, and we um, and he's pretty much the ship's cook, though all you can really cook is stuff with gum. Chewing gum? Ugh, God damn it. So anyways, throughout their, during their search, Olaf's group gets a their own... Squid, twenty thousand leagues in our sea style sub. Yeah, and this and it, pretty much uh, the the uh, was it the sinister duo. The sinister duo, thank you. Uh, sin the sinister duo, pretty much uh, give Esme a mission, mm -hmm. and they give her her own submarine. Yes, leaving her in charge in a way. And, and it was interesting. What we really liked is that Olaf is literally stuck between these thumbs because usually he's the one taking charge and. And yes. it's, 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 it sucks for him that he can't really do anything because he wants to go after the border layers while they, so, they want her to go after the sugar bowl. And so during that little part, they... <laughs> go on, Chris. Uh, during that part, they pretty much... Uh, they, they ran into pretty much one first beastly little thing, and that's when they okay. bump into... Uh, that's when they bump into the border layers. Yes. Thinking it's somebody else until they actually realize it's the Baudelaire's. Um, and through all of this, Kit sends Quigley Quagmire to go help the Baudelaire's with the Sugar Bowl. Yes. And so just as they, just as they're forced by Olaf to go to get it, because th we also find out there's this evil fungus thing. Mm -hmm. Just as they go to get it, the fungus thing shows up and they have to escape. Yeah. Which they successfully do. But unfortunately, the fungus stuff gets into Sunny's uh, scuba. And that's how it kind of ends, pretty much on there. On that note, pretty much. A um, uh, little, uh, you know, fun tidbits from the last episode again is that the the guy with the hook, hooky, pretty much. Uh, you know, nice little side note that he pretty much did tell uh, Olaf about the girl that he found. Um, I pretty much had theorized that there has to be some type of relation, whether it's a Father, daughter, brother, sister, or some type of family relation or something. Yeah. Um, either that or, again, like how you stated, he's probably deep, he's so deep undercover. Maybe he is part of the, secretly Maybe. a part of the BFD that he has to go along with everything. Um, but it feels like that's, it feels like it's one of those type of theories that's going on here. Also, she, um, uh, what was her name, uh, Fiona? I think it's Fiona. Uh, Fiona, pretty much, also has a secret too because... She wanted to tell Klaus something about the book, about this book she was taking out, about her family history. It's like little tidbits that they keep tossing in there that that need to be said, or you want to find out what's you want to find out more about that scene. Yeah. Um, so it's very interesting. Uh, I've been reading a lot of you guys' comments, and not a lot of people like this book. This book wasn't. A lot of people's favorites. Yeah, this one apparently it's one of the books that wasn't as well received. So. It wasn't well received whatsoever. Well, I, I've, so. enjoy, I've enjoyed it for the most part. Same here. I've been I, I'm enjoying it as well. Um, I can see where they may probably dislike it a little bit. Um, but let's just dive right into this. Uh, get this going for you guys for a series of unfortunate events, season three, episode four, Grim Grotto, part two. So let's go. They even know where the brig's at on their own ship. Yeah.
What the fuck? Oh, it's more of the fucking. This is this kidnapped scouts. Oh yeah, even Olaf's like rolling his eyes. <laughs> It's so cool they're actually using her voice this time. Yeah. Help me, please. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Right there. Now the rowing room is round the curve to the right. From there, it's a series of confusing twists and turns that took me hours and hours of walking to my Right, then left, then another right, then right again, then two more left, and you'll be back at the creek right. That's right, left, right, right, left, left. Show off. <laughs> <laughs> so that's right, left, right, right, left. left. <laughs> it's a metaphor for death. <laughs> It's another one that's young! Very The book said scientists were not like you in your lovely lane. We drove down lovely lane on the way to live with one. I remember the smell, it was terrible, like black pepper. No, not pepper. A root of horse. Horseradish. Oh, cute. I found the spice record that there's no horseradish. And what's that? Your birthday. Oh, that was a dessert. They were. We can't lose sleep. Seemed like the tables might turn after all. Hey! We should turn the tables in the chair for first. Save me. Aww. You saved yourself. We never saw you the entire time, but we didn't think to use it until you told us. I guess uh, wasabi's made with the horseradish. That it's just a nervous way of showing Sunny is slowly getting smarter. Yeah. <laughs> Siblings. When they vanish, trouble may wait. But not always. So he, she, so wait, I missed, ah, oh, we missed that. My years contacting my own siblings brought them nothing but trouble, so it was easier to let them believe I was dead. Is Ted Pop's really gone? Hi. They're brother and sister. Wow. That's cool. His face again, but I'm sorry I left you alone. He's your brother? He found me when he searched himself up, but we didn't have any time to talk. He's a terrible apprentice at Anversal Aquatics when I learned that Gregor Anversal was cultivating in his grotto. A fungus so powerful it could destroy. So he's the one who started the fire the in the. He was playing with fire. I warned him it was volatile. If the fungus got out, it could destroy everything. That's why he set the fire. He didn't listen. They like Chef Bellis. When you think of me, think of the food you love very much. Oh! Oh! <laughs> you stay. Oh, yeah. You stay. Esme, I finally found something to laugh about. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
There you go. Yeah, I knew he, it. he was the... He was the... They're gonna cross again anyway. The sky once more. The tedious cycle started all over again. I found the cause of speech. It is awful to contemplate this sort of life, which one would always be forced to. The cycle starts all over again. Look at the beach that they're at. They're gonna go to the beach where they found out their parents died. Never able to turn the tables for very long. Beach again. What are you doing? What's with the those socks? shoes? Instead of searching for you, which frankly is going to be nothing but tourists, tourists means trouble. Well, you know what? Tourists means trouble. Just like the first episode. Yes! Is that my new secretary? No! No! Fuck you! Hell no! What we can't find the blue in a cave! There you go, recycle. That would be ridiculous. With that banker. See, even the strange fertile woman wants you to come. You'll take us to VFD. I promise. Break the cycle. Break the cycle. Start anew. Hi, Mr. Fox. Sorry, I'm Sorry, Sorry, Mara. Mara. With a little help from your friends. Yeah. He's zoned up. are already converging on the Hotel de Mont, so we'll have to drive quickly. Do you have any questions? Uh, who are you? An excellent question. The name's Snicket. Snicket. Kit Snicket. Kit Snicket. That's where you know you can trust her. She's a snicket. snicket. Yeah! Oh god, next book's gonna be good. Oh yes. So that was a very eventful episode four with some very big revelations. About a lot of big revelations and go ahead, I'm sorry. And some stuff to really think about. Yes. For the most part. Uh, of course the big revelation is that Hooky, aka Fernal, like we had stated, had you is, stated, it, it is, a relation. Fiona, yeah. is Fiona's um, older brother. Yeah, that is the older uh, older stepbrother. That's what he said. It's the older stepbrother, pretty much. Family, nonetheless. Family, yeah, exactly. Like, and I, we got to find it. out that he originally was against create against experimenting on this fungus. He's the one who caused the fire. So he's the one who caused the fire, and that's where we got our new saying, mm -hmm. which is nefarious means for noble reasons. Exactly. So and, uh, in his case, and this is one thing I've always wondered about this, because like um, Klaus wanted to cross a line when they originally had Esme capture, but mm -hmm. they were were against they were against that. Yeah. You know, there's been oh they're bad, they're good. There's but then, two sides. But then we gotta remember there's always gonna be a gray area and we've never haven't really seen a gray area till this point. Yeah. Where he did this, not only to stop them from from the 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 um, creating this game, weapon, this overall creating a weapon from getting out, but in long term going Cal off. He even explains Cal Olaf's the only one that took me in. Your your the my step own stepfather disowned me. I, he was the only one who took me in, pretty much, and yeah. that's why I did what I did to survive. He did what he had to do to survive. A lot of them had to do what they had to do, and perfect examples with his sister what she had to do. You know, she had to, <laughs> in order to keep her brother safe, she had to join them. She had to join, you know, Olaf's little thing pretty much just to get them, just to, the, you know, it's like there's times when you have to, you have to make sacrifices in order to survive. Yes. You know, and that's what he had to do. You know, it's like nobody could take me in, he took me in, and I just, I just all from there. You know, it's like, it's like there are times when he knows that he should be doing good, but he's just following orders. That's yeah. what he's doing. And that's why I think the bullies are going to eventually understand is yeah, um, there's going to be people with those gray er in those gray areas yeah. where they, like the saying says, nefarious, oh, is it nefarious uh, means for noble reason. Yeah. And I, I you can actually And how there's it. no, what is it, there is no two sides to the schism. Yeah, there, that, what he said, there is no two sides. Sides. In a way, it, it, there's more than two sides saying how it's like, Again, it goes back to what we were just talking about, saying how you're going to have the good, you're going to have the bad, but you're going to have to have the in-between. The ones where it's just, you, you have to survive. You do whatever it takes to survive. Vigilantes, like Batman. Exactly. So, uh, you know, even the way 
the Punisher works, you know, it's just like, has to, I know, I know that, but still it's like you have to survive. But honestly, I, I appreciate that, acknowledge, acknowledging that, that there is this gray, in this world, there is that gray area. Yeah. There are people who are oblivious, but are kind of people. There are people who are bad, but mean well, like Vernal, yeah. pretty much. And that's, that's why you really... Yeah, Olaf is just the one that's pure evil, pretty much. He's just on that darker side, yeah. pretty much. You know, and Ferno just had to do whatever it took to survive in this world that, that he had to live in. Yeah. You know, so he had to, he had to join his, his, his uh, troop only because, you know, nobody else would take him. You know, only because of what he did. But he only did it because of trying to protect the world from something like this. Or they should never see something like this. Yeah. So this really, oh, this episode, I like this episode compared to the first one. Because it really that. made you think about the whole philo the whole um, show's philosophy about, you know. Good and evil. No, no, and no, about putting out, being the ones to put out the fire and starting the fire. Yeah, there's always a good, it's like, it's like yeah, you can start a fire, but there's got to be a purpose for it. There's got to be that reason. No you know, there's reasons. that reason. Hence why Fernal, in a way, had karma back out of him when he lost his hand. Exactly. You know, he's like, he's like, that was my karma, pretty much. But I had to do what I had to do. And in the end, with everything they've learned now, they can start a new cycle and perhaps do better, pretty Do much. better and become and, and maybe bullet, create no, something no, di new and different. And also help bullies realize, you know, there's going to be those out there, just like Fernal, who did what they did. For a good cause. Yeah, exactly. And they're gonna. Hopefully, by the end, they're gonna realize that. No, and realize that you know Olaf is a bad guy. He'll always be a bad guy. <coughs> but the fire stars do have a tiny bit of a point. While on the other side, VFD are like all good, all might, but you know they're not always right. They're not always right, and they're and always. And Infernal do with the fungus is a perfect example of that. Yeah, you know, a perfect example is like you know any type of pol type of state of police overall. They're not all yeah. good, but you know what? They do what they can to survive, you know, to make it through each day. So hopefully, they all come, well, hopefully, with this cycle anew, they, with everything they've learned, they can do better. Do they better, what what, possibly create, you know, do something new and different with VFD. You know, start something, start something up that's different that will help change VFD from what it's being perceived as. Yeah. You know, trying to make it perceive it as... It's all, all, you know, it's all in good faith, faith, while it should be just represented as it's all in good faith, but with sacrifices. You know, there are sacrifices that have to be yeah. done. So, yeah. Yeah, this, um, was, this was a fantastic it, episode. I, well, that's what uh, we will say. This was a good episode because it really made you think. It really yeah, made you think about the philosophy of the show overall. Yeah. Yeah, what it's trying to do and trying to achieve overall. So, other than that, if you're new to the channel, you can hit the like button. If you want to talk to us more about stuff like this, comment down below. If you want to share us around, share it around. And if you like us just a little <laughs> bit more than anybody else when it comes to talking about Netflix original series, hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon as well. Let us know what you guys enjoyed about this episode. I know some of you didn't like the book overall. It didn't really receive well. But, of course, they've always changed a few things here and there for the show's sake. Um, what were your guys' thoughts on this episode overall? Do you agree with like what we just stated? How that's what kind of what this philosophy of the show overall is? You know, where how VFD is you know actually being represented as? I mean, let us know in the comments below. Love to hear your guys' thoughts on this episode overall from some of the philosophy points stuff like that. But also any funny moments, you know, any you know hilarious moments that you thought you know, or even those lines that Olaf does sometimes that. We may miss or we may caught. And it's just like, oh, I get it. We're taking in there, yeah. you know, that type of stuff. You know, let us know in the comments down below. Uh, but know what you thought of our reaction overall. But most importantly, we thank you for watching. And, of course, on the next episode of SRB TV, dealing with a series of unfortunate events, we are reaching the halfway point of the season, pretty yeah. much. We'll, and we will begin with that with the... the more or less, that's why I said more or less, the halfway point. We begin the halfway point. <coughs> and we will be tackling Season 3, Episode 5, mm -hmm. The Penultimate Peril, Part, Part one. 1. And that's a mouthful. So until next time, I'm Kristen. I'm Christopher. This has been a very wasabi-filled episode of SRB TV. See ya. <laughs> SRB TV. Later. <laughs> 
Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to check out any of our previous reactions, as well as our other shows, click the playlist down below. And if you want to check us out in the social universe, you can check us out on Twitter, as well as Stardust, at Super React Bros.